Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I would like to share with you two dresses with uh, detachable pussy bows. And the fact that these bows are detachable really increases the number of looks I get from um, these garments. And uh, in a way, today's video is a continuation of my last video, video 75, where I uh, raised the contact point of the bow, you know, from originally the bottom portion of the V-neck to a bit higher up. And so that gave me uh, two options of tying the bows, uh, either at the higher neckline or lower, you know, such as the way I'm wearing right now. So the first dress that I will share with you today is this uh, dress here, uh, made from about 2.6 yards of about 56, 57 inch wide rayon poplin uh, that I purchased from fabric.com uh, in January of this year. And uh, so here is a close up look of the print and the texture itself. And so this is very, you know, being poplin, it has no texture, so it's very smooth. And the print, as you can see, is, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you call this. You know, it's obviously the, the sort of paint splash is bigger than sort of, you know, what you see in a Jackson Pollock kind of painting. But I overall, I really like, normally a pussy bow, you know, would be paired with a blouse or a blouse dress. But I wanted to do something different for this version. So instead, uh, there, you know, this one is not a uh, sort of shirt dress. Um, it's a, you know, it's a one piece for the front portion. And in this case, the bow tie itself is completely uh, detachable. So for example, here. And so it, so underneath this bow is a very simple v-neck design and in this case i incorporated some of my favorite elements uh, into this dress and number one is this very billowy bishop sleeve so in my last video i tried out a tutorial uh, by the youtuber uh, called soulmate and uh, where she showed you how to increase the volume for the back of the sleeve and so for this version, I decided to go all out. So I increased the volume even a little bit, you know, actually a lot more, actually. So this is what it looks like. But I cannot say it looks so huge, really, even though the pattern piece now looks a lot bigger. And so as a result, this dress is the most fabric hungry project. I've ever done for a dress. Um, not only because of the pussy bow ties, um, the tie itself is uh, incredibly fabric hungry. So it looks like this. And this bow tie is a modified version from the original Moot Society's Onella pussy bow blouse. And I will also link the pattern in the description box below. And I've been making gazillion versions of this pussy bow uh, design and really love it. So I do highly recommend this and especially the fact that it is a free pattern. So that is icing on the cake. So anyway, so this being so fabric hungry, the widest part of the sleeve piece is actually 40 inches wide. So as you can see, it will take up a huge part of the width of the fabric. You know, so for example, this fabric is 56 inches wide, so really took up a big chunk of it. And if I were to make this uh, with, say, cotton cotton, which normally is about 43 inches wide, it would have taken up the entire width of the fabric. So this is why the stress itself is so fabric hungry. So anyway, so this is the number one uh, feature that I incorporate into this dress. And the second feature that I, uh, you know, incorporate into this dress is the fact that it has a yoke. So here, let me uh, remove the belt here so you could see better. 
So here, so for example, this is a bodice, so there's a waistline, and this is a yoke, so it's smooth yoke. And then up below it, I attached a gather skirt, so it looks like this. So for the pattern pieces that I use for the rest of the stress, um, the bodice is the uh, the bodice that I created uh, from my video 66, where I disconnected a shift dress into a bodice and a separate skirt. And for the yoke portion, here you can see there's a yoke here, um, it's also that same shift dress, you know, but just on the bottom portion only. And originally, I just kind of eyeballed it. So I decided the yoke will be about, you know, seven inches, etc. And then for the gather skirt portion, I just used uh, the very easy Vogue V9197, except I reduced the V9197 skirt portion uh, the lengthwise by the amount of yoke that I will be using. And the reason I decided to do the yoke was because a simple gather skirt would obviously have some volume at the waist area. And, uh, you know, I don't really need more volume at my waist area. So I wanted to try uh, pairing that gather skirt, which, you know, I quite like the look of, with this yoke. And so it was just self-drafted. From my past experiences making um, skirts or dresses with, uh, you know, where a portion of it is cut on the bias, I knew that the skirt uh, would stretch and normally I would let it hang for a day or two before I even out. But before, I always thought that it would only stretch, you know, sort of towards the hem of the skirt. However, that is not correct because uh, I learned it in a way the hard way. Because after I connected the, the gather skirt to this yoke, this yoke, the side seams really stretched out. So originally the yoke was supposed to be, you know, ever slightly kind of like a smile line, you know, a little lower in the middle and higher on both sides of the seam. It start drooping, you know, because it's got pulled down by the weight of the skirt. So the smile line ended up becoming a bit of a frown line. And so it just looked awful. So I had to uh, correct it. And uh, obviously there's nobody to help me uh, mark the lines. And so it took quite a while to kind of get the, this um, new line correct. And I did let it hang for about two, three days while I continue the adjustment process. And one way I found to be very helpful <laughs> was I simply used my phone to take a short video. And well, I just kind of, you know, turn very gradually, you know, kind of similar to I, the way I'm filming right now using my phone. And I just kind of turned it. And uh, that would tell me what portion of the yolk uh, is not even. And then I would just mark it based on what I see in that video. And so this yolk adjustment took two evenings, actually. Um, I normally sew in the evenings after, you know, a day at the office uh, or at work, at home office. And so it took two evenings to really get to a place where I am relatively heavy. So, uh, so this project is a fairly time consuming project. And of course, once I attach the gather skirt, the gather skirt portion also stretched out. And, but at least that portion I'm much more familiar with. So what I did was after it also hanging for quite a few days, I pinned the, the waist seam of the dress to the waist seam of my dress form. And then I use a ruler measuring from the floor up. And then that's how I mark the correct hem line. And then, and so that's how I evened out the hem. And so it just, this project uh, really took, I would say it took about 13 evenings or 14 evenings. So it really took a lot longer than normally. But you know what, I'm still quite happy with how it turned out. Originally, I have the pussy bow uh, tie uh, 
directly attached to the dress itself. However, I I just found that you know with the very busy print and also the pussy bow, I mean the pussy bow and also the bishop sleeves and the yoke and the gather skirt. I think there comes to a point where a garment just has too much going on. It just became too busy. And um, so I decided to uh, remove the pussy bow piece and make it completely detachable. And this way I could, you know, depending on my mood, uh, I could decide to just wear it, you know, as a simple v-neck kind of dress. Actually, it's not so simple because it's still quite a busy uh, print and with a whole lot of design elements anyway. And so that's one option. Another option is, as uh, you see here, it's I could just wear this pussy bow as a uh, sort of hair tie on my hair. And that would, in, you know, so that kind of gives it a completely uh, different look. And obviously, um, just like a regular pussy bow, uh, I could tie it up, you know, higher up this way. Um, kind of like what I did with the peachy, a vintage print dress in my last video. So I can either do it this way, you know, but I found that this is just too much, you know, if I tie it up high. So I don't think I would do it this way, but if I lower it, so now it's like this. And, and uh, you know, I think it looks a lot better when it's lower. So like this. And also, if I feel like it, I could simply use this tie as a waist tie. So instead of the, the belt that I made, uh, I could also just forego the belt and then give it a bit more of a relaxed look by having this waist tie. And I could either tie it in the front, kind of like this. So give it kind of more of a almost like a flamingo kind of dance look. <laughs> I'm not sure. And so I can give it this look, uh, or I could tie the tie in the back. So I'm just move it back. So it would look like this. So really, you know, I really like this actually option because in a way it simplifies the construction of the garment because I don't have to be so careful and precise about exactly uh, at what point I will attach the pussy bow tie and also really gives me a lot of uh, different looks so I really love it and uh, so definitely this is a, a, a construction method that I will use uh, very frequently in the future I am sure. I lined this dress uh, with a simple uh, rayon chalet that I purchased from fabricwholesaledirect.com and uh, the pattern that I use for the lining is the simple shift dress uh, from video 66 before I separated out the shift dress into a separate bodice and a skirt. And, and obviously the reason I use that shift dress is because the lining does not need to have the separate yoke or the gather skirt portion. So the lining uh, is a very easy component of this dress. Once I battle through, you know, adjusting the yoke and the, um, the neckline and the pussy bone collar, etc. But, uh, but I'm very glad how it worked out. So all's well that ends well. So here is a quick video of this dress. And I paired the dress with a pair of three and a half inch heels in black. And um, I, I do think that the combination of the fabric and all these design elements are, is probably not the best, but I'm still very glad how it turned out. And, uh, and also with the detachable bow ties, it really gives me uh, many different looks. So overall, I am still very happy about how this dress turned out. After I completed this dress, I had just, you know, a little under half a yard of this fabric left. And so I decided to uh, make this little top. So here you go. It's a cute little top with the same fabric. And uh, the top portion 
is uh, made using the New Look 6000 pattern. And I previously talked about this pattern in my videos number four and also number 11. And in this case, I just, you know, that one was a shift dress pattern. And, but in this case, I just cut it off at, uh, as long as I had the fabric for. So it's just a little bit under the waist. And so that's what the sort of the neckline and the, uh, if you don't look at the, the ruffle sleeves, it's basically a tank top. So that's what I originally wanted to uh, make. Uh, but miraculously, I actually just had a little enough left over. So I made this little kind of a uh, cap sleeve or ruffled cap sleeve uh, using a McCall's pattern, a McCall 7900. And those, so this is what it looks like. And uh, so as you can see, it's a simple, you know, two bus stars in the front and that's it. And so th there's no opening. So I just, you know, pull it in and out of myself. I, in this case, um, I have not been a fan of a uh, bias binding traditionally. So in this case, the neckline, uh, even though it's also finished with bias binding, I actually sandwiched the edge of the fabric or the top uh, in between the bias binding and so it gives me this very uh, I think very neat finish and it because there's a little band so in a way it gives the neckline a little more definition so I'm quite uh, I quite like it and the the bias binding that I used uh, I cut out a one inch wide so really by the time this you know so this portion is a quarter of an inch and i really like it it's you know it's kind of dainty and uh it's a feature but it's not it doesn't take center stage so it kind of plays a supporting role to this garment and so i really like it and so about this uh, mccall's ruffle cap sleeve that's just what it looks like and it's really cute so i really love it and also even after making up this little top I, I decided to just patch up whatever leftover fabric I have, you know, since this fabric print is so busy. So the connecting seams would not be so obvious. So this is what I did. I managed to cut out this little straight strip. And uh, so in the way I could use it as a uh, bow tie piece if I want to, if I want, if I don't want a, the full size pussy bow. So this is a much skinnier version of that tie. And, and just like the other one, I can also use it as a hair tie, you know, so I can tie it up like this. So it really increases the versatility of this whole garment thing. And so this project is truly as a minimum waste type of project because the, the scraps that I have left over are incredibly scrappy. Uh, so I am really happy about the basically full utilization of the three yards of fabric that I have purchased. So here is a quick video of this uh, cute little top and I paired it with a pair of jeans and so it's perfect just for weekend uh, running around town uh, type of thing and so it's perfect and in this way I have no leftover fabric uh, that I have to deal with so I am really glad that I was able to squeeze out this cute little top out of the remaining fabric uh, after making this dress. The second dress that I will share with you today is this one here made from two yards of about 42 inch wide silk shamus that I purchased from Mu Fabrics store in New York City's garment district uh, almost three years ago at this point. So this is one of the earliest uh, fabrics that I've ever purchased and uh, so here is a quick look of this uh, print. I just really love this green and uh, so really love it. And uh, so just like the earlier dress, this bow tie piece is also 100% uh, detachable. So it looks like this. And otherwise, it's just a simple v-neck shift dress. And this 
Shift dress pattern is a self-drafted pattern and I talked about how I drafted it and the ver and also share with you several other versions of this shift dress uh, starting with my video 64 uh, through 69 and also this is the same shift dress uh, that I shared with you in my video 66 how I mark the waist seam and then separate out uh, the dress into a separate bodice and the skirt. So construction wise, uh, nothing groundbreaking about this dress. You know? So it's that same shirt dress uh, with short sleeve because that is all the fabric that I had. Originally, I had only planned to make a sleeveless dress uh, with this detachable uh, pussy bow tie. But miraculously, whatever was left over was actually enough to cut out these little uh, short sleeves. So I decided to add the sleeves um, anyway, because I find that um, a short sleeve is a bit more versatile in terms of work wear versus a sleeveless dress. Uh, but I'm just really loving it. And about this fabric, so Shamu's one side is matte and the other side is shiny and very slippery. And uh, one thing I really like about this fabric is the fact that the right side of the fabric, the print, is actually on the matte side. And so, uh, so I really like it better this way because the shiny material sometimes is a little too much uh, as a dress. Um, however, the flip side of it is that because the shiny side is the wrong side and when you sew, the shiny side, you know, because of the right sides together, the shiny side is the side that you actually sew on. So as a result, the fabric is incredibly slippery. But you know, these days I, with plenty of practice working with slippery fabrics, it has not been an issue. I just need to be uh, a bit more attentive when I sew. And so that's what it looks like. So it really is, uh, you know, so it's really a really lovely uh, result that I get. And in this case, also, a, uh, I made a matching belt with it and this detachable bow tie. So once I remove the bow tie, it's a uh, very simple uh, v-neck sort of shift dress. And just like before, I could wear this bow tie this way, you know, so it really gives it a very different look. Um, so I really love this detachable bow tie um, the versatility that this detachable bow tie gives me. And one thing about this fabric is that it's been a while since I made anything with silk. And so I totally forgot how light the silk is when compared with rayon viscose. And even though the rayon viscose feels incredibly soft on the skin, uh, I have to say though, silk really takes it up a notch. It just feels so amazingly soft. And about the silk, uh, I just, you know, I, I am a bit naughty, so I disregard all care warnings. So I, what I did, instead of, you know, dry clean only, I just pre-washed this fabric, hand wash in cold water. And whatever it needed to shrink would have done so already by the time, you know, I cut out this fabric. And so I have not found any further shrinkage um, in when I launder any of the silk garments that I've made, as long as I properly pre-shrink the fabric. So it is not necessary to dry clean silk if you prepare it first. And obviously with store-bought silk, I don't think they pre-treat it. So for a store purchase silk garment, one does run the risk of shrinkage if uh you know i decide to hand wash it but i've done it before and it has been fine but obviously these days i am making my own clothes so i would not be buying anything from the store for a very very long time i tried a different way to hem the hem portion of this dress and so traditionally i use the blind hem foot of my machine just to you know to do the blind hem but in this case uh, because the fact that this fabric was so slippery and so when I even though I was very careful when I was cutting it out 
towards the end, uh, there was about a one inch difference for certain parts of the hem. So I, in a way, I have to lose uh, some length. And this dress is already a bit on the short side already, just because of the limited amount of fabric that I had. The hem for this dress is actually very small. So here, let me show you. So as you can see, you know, it's, it's folded over like this. And so because it's so tiny, uh, I, I did not, you know, so if I wanted to use the blind hem, I would have to do it by hand because this, this um, hem is just too small for the machine. As you can see, the shiny side is uh, the wrong side of the fabric. And, uh, but then I didn't quite feel like finishing with my hand. So I just turned it over and sewed a very a straight stitch that is about one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter away from the fold or the folded edge. And that gives me the same look as the sort of the super baby hem that you see in, um, in silk blouses you see uh, from the store. And so I really like this finish. It looks, it still looks very professional. But interestingly, when I was testing out whether I would like it or not on a scrap, it's interesting if I move the, uh, the stitch line a bit further away from the folded hem edge, say about a quarter of an inch, then, you know, it's, I hate to be unkind, but somehow the dress just all of a sudden looks very homemade. It does not look professionally made. But once I move the stitch line very, very close to the edge, then it looks like that, you know, professional finish that you see on a silk blouse from a store. And it really works out great. And so I'm very happy how it works out. <laughs> and so that I managed to preserve, you know, as much length of this dress as I can. I lined this silk chamois dress uh, with coordinating hunter green china silk that I also purchased from Moo Fabrics store in New York City's garment district. And so here's a quick picture of the lining itself. And as you can see, the sleeves of the lining is in a different color from the rest of the dress. And the reason was because I had two yards of this lining fabric. And after I cut out the, the shift dress portion of the lining, which used just about one yard of this fabric, I, in a way, I wanted to preserve the other yard for another project because if I just cut out the sleeves, uh, it will kind of cut out a, a weird corner from the fabric, the leftover fabric, and that would really limit uh, what I can do with the remaining fabric. And since I had a little bit of this other uh, China silk left over from another project, I decided to just use that for my sleeves, you know, since it is a lining nobody will see and only I know. And uh, this is also further proof that this is a me made garment and not some commercial, you know, produced garment. And, uh, and because also the way I lined it, you know, you couldn't see it all because there's a plenty of this uh, at the hem here. So it's fine, you know, I don't worry about it. And, uh, and also, uh, by the way, I talked about how I line a dress uh, in my video 27 in case you are interested. So here is a quick video of this uh, silk chamois dress. And I paired the dress with a pair of three and a half inch heels in black and uh i you know i'm just so happy that i finally managed to uh use this fabric uh because for the longest time i couldn't figure out quite what to make with this despite the fact i really like this fabric and wanted to do it justice and so i'm really glad with the outcome and uh, i have to say that this dress without the bow tie does look a bit plain but once with the bow tie it really jazz it up and so as you can see, I can either wear it as a regular bow tie or as a hair tie. And uh, so really happy uh, how both of these dresses turned out.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and also about the usage of making a detachable uh, tie uh, as a sort of a building coordinating accessory to the garment. And it really gives uh, the garment different looks, as you can see, you know, that I'm wearing now as a hair tie piece. Um, so anyway, on that note, I hope you will stay safe, be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye.